Hey guys. Well, I made it through the show last night. That was my second radio broadcast over on PrepperBroadcasting.com. And I want to say this up front right now. Once this video is over, I have no intention of ever discussing genetically modified stuff again. I'm going to say what I have to say right now. Basically what I'm going to do is go over a quick recap of last night's show. And I got a couple of personal messages at the end that uh, I feel like I need to say real quick. Uh, it's extremely controversial. People are very opinionated. But for whatever reason, people seem to have an opinion about it, but they don't want to do anything about it. And I, I don't quite understand that. The only reason that I brought this whole issue up was because of the fact that I am trying to help new gardeners with their seed buying, help them get started. You see the comments all the time. If you don't buy 100% heirloom seed, you might end up with something genetically modified. Only trust a 100% certified company. Anybody else, you never know what you're going to get. That's not true. Absolutely not. I laid out the case last night as plain and simple as I possibly could and it's, it's like this. You can buy a seed from any company in the United States right now to put in your garden and you will not get genetically modified seed. The only way you're going to get any genetically modified seed is if you specifically make a concerted effort to go after the corn, soybeans, uh, sugar beets, alfalfa, those crops that are grown by the commercial growers, uh, the farmers. If you go and you try to buy those things, yes, you can get those, but you're going to have to jump through some serious hoops and it ain't worth messing with. For the average home gardener, when you buy your seeds anywhere, pick any company in the United States, uh, if you want to save your seeds, as long as you get an open pollinated variety, you will be absolutely fine. It doesn't have to be 100% certified, uh, documented, tested, as I said last night, note from your mama heirloom. If people want to grow 100% heirloom, that is fine. But if everybody is buying 100% certified heirloom from a handful of companies, you end up putting everybody else out of business. All of the hybrid seeds will disappear. All of the newer generation open pollinated seeds will disappear. You'll be left with a handful of companies. They can jack the prices up because they know people will have nowhere else to turn to. You will have concentrated the seed market into a very small group of companies and then the thing that people are worried about, somebody like Monsanto stepping in and assuming complete control, you have played right into their hands. You need to support the smaller companies, keep it and maintain as much variety out there as you possibly can. But you don't have to take my word for it. Uh, there's a lot of things that go on trying to make the, uh, the, the live radio shows sitting at the computer, uh, trying to talk, keep up with everything, trying to halfway tune into the chat room. Uh, one of the things that I tried to do last night was post some links to exactly what I was talking about. I try to give uh, factual stuff. That's why I like to show what I'm doing, show you how I did it, and then I show you the results so I have something to back up what I'm saying. I'm not interested in some fantastical statement or trying to have to go out and confirm what somebody else said. But some of this stuff I have to so I have to find reputable sources as a gardener one of the best sources you can have is your local uh, agricultural extension office whether it be your county uh, the universities have extension offices very good sources of information I want to read this one right here from Jeff Gilman Washington State University Extension Office. I will put a link below this video and in the last one where I just uh, said that I was going to be talking about this. Are GMO seeds available for purchase? I'm going to read you exactly what Jeff had to say. We recently had a question sent to us about GMO seeds, whether they were being foisted upon us at the store. The simple answer is no. You just can't go to the garden center and buy genetically modified seeds of any plant. They're not available yet. I suppose, theoretically, you could call yourself a farmer and purchase genetically modified corn or soybeans, but the corn isn't sweet corn for the most part, and soybeans, who grows those besides the farmers? 
Goes on to say you could ask a farmer friend to get you genetically modified alfalfa or sugar beets, but why? Are you really going to broadcast Roundup across your garden and it wouldn't be legal for the farmers to give you the seed or sell it to you anyways? The answer is no. This is from Jeff Gilman, Washington State University Extension Office. Dated May 3rd, 2012, six months ago. I addressed this last night, the situation with Simonies. With Monsanto's recent purchase of Simonies, there seems to be confusion in our Master Gardener group about boycotting Monsanto products versus avoiding GMO products. Lists of tomato, pepper, and other vegetable varieties are being circulated to avoid due to GMO concerns. Are any GMO tomato or pepper seeds or seedlings available to consumers? This is Jeff's answer. Hi Lisa. Nope. No GMO tomato or pepper seeds or any other veggies for that matter are available to consumers. No need to worry. End of story. So if you don't take my word for it, maybe you would take the word of somebody at the Washington State Extension Office who probably knows a little bit more than I do about this stuff. I certainly think it does anyway. Again, I say the only reason that I would ever approach this GMO deal was to address the concerns of the new gardeners who are out there trying to find sources of seed. I get the same questions all the time. Where can I find some non-GMO seeds at? And my, my answer is always the same. Anywhere right now, you are not going to get genetically modified seeds without making a concerted effort to get that stuff from the uh, feed stores that they sell to the commercial growers. Trust me, you do not want to get involved in that kind of stuff. What I said in a nutshell was this. If you are concerning all of your efforts, your time and energy on worrying about GMO seeds as it pertains to your gardening, you are flat out wasting your time. Your fight where you will win this battle is in the grocery store and in your kitchen. You can plant every heirloom seed on God's green earth and you will make no difference in this world as far as the GMO stuff is concerned until you change what you are doing in the grocery store. If you are seriously concerned about the GM stuff, you will change your buying habits and you will find alternatives for that stuff you buy in the grocery store. When you buy your vegetable oil that has corn or soybeans in it, 90% of those crops grown in the United States are genetically modified. It makes sense that 90% of that stuff in the store is going to have the same stuff in it. You need to be buying stuff like peanut oil, olive oil. Stay away from that vegetable oil. When you look at the statistics, knowing that 90% of the corn, soybeans, canola, 95% of the sugar beets grown in the United States right now are genetically modified, that pretty much tells you that darn near everything in the grocery store that has a derivative of corn, soybeans, canola, cottonseed, those things are going to have a genetically modified component to them. If you are concerned about them, then you can't be buying those items you need to be looking for alternatives. I mentioned this, a lot of people right now are posting videos about uh, meals from food storage. Deb uh, Perbane, I think, has done a lot of videos on meals in a jar. What I would like to see is the YouTube community, and it is vast. There are millions of people watch YouTube videos every day. If there's ever been a place where somebody can make a difference, it is on YouTube. I would like to see people make some videos, non-GMO or non-GM foods for a full complete meal. Everything that is in that meal must be GM free. I believe that if you will do that and you will take the time to do the research, find those products that are alternatives to what people generally consume and let them know how they can be replacing this possibly GM stuff something can be done. If you are one of the people who feels like that Prop 37 deal, if you believe that getting a uh, GM label on all of the food will solve the problem, that's not going to be the answer either. Because what's going to happen when you go to the grocery store, say they pass this deal, you go to the store and 90% of the things in that store have a GM sticker on it and the public is now very aware of this situation. Nobody is going to buy the GM stuff. Everybody is going to be looking for that roughly 10% or so of the food that is non-GM. 
that peanut oil that I just talked about, price is going to skyrocket. People will stay away from vegetable oil. You won't be able to afford the peanut oil. All of the other alternatives, you will not be able to afford them. Are you willing to pay two, three times as much to get a product that is non-GM as opposed to buying what you're already uh, used to consuming? That's a tough choice. Especially with people's incomes the way they are right now, they just cannot afford that jack up in price. That's one of the things that would probably happen. It would be interesting to see exactly how much of that stuff in the store actually was, uh, had a GM component to it. My guess is darn near everything in there. If you look at the milk, it comes from uh, the dairy cows who are fed what? Likely a diet of uh, corn, soybeans, and probably plenty of hormone shots. Where does that corn and soybeans come from? 90% is GMO. That ought to tell you something. If you're concerned about it, you don't need to be drinking the milk. You can't have the cheeses. You can't have any dairy products. You need to have a milk goat or a milk cow in your backyard. You need to be raising your own corn, grinding it up, using that to feed your chickens with. That way you're not buying laying mass from the store that may have uh, GM corn in it. If you are concerned, it is going to be up to you to make these changes. There is nobody in those stores right now who is twisting your arm and making you buy that stuff. You do that knowingly of your own free will. You have to accept responsibility for your own actions. We already know you can't trust the corporation. You can't trust the government. And I don't know why anybody would be able to trust a label that somebody puts on a carton. You really can't trust any of the food that you buy in the store 100%. Cat's Cradle said this, if you don't grow it, you don't know it, and I just flip it around. If you want to know it, you better grow it. Now, I knew when I brought up this subject, there would, there would be the comments that would come. Uh, I was prepared for the links to all the, uh, the YouTube videos addressing uh, the farmers in India, the cancer and all that kind of stuff. What I wasn't prepared for is the people to come up and question whether or not I was concerned. In that video that I did recently, the last one, I said specifically, me personally, I was not overly concerned about the GM deal as it related to me. I was growing a lot of my own food, vegetables, consuming it, and thereby I felt like I could offset what was going on in the grocery store. There were a couple of people who took that as to say that, well, since, it, uh, since you're growing your own stuff, you don't seem to be concerned with what anybody else is doing out there. Or just because it's not having a big impact on you, you don't seem too concerned about what's happening to the rest of the world. Let me tell you something. For the last two years, I have posted, I don't know, almost 150 videos, hours and hours filming. If you grow a big garden outside, you got a tractor, you got a, a walk behind tiller, I have showed people how to do that start to finish, showed you what to do, showed you what results you could get. If you do raised beds, I showed you how to do that, showed you what you could do at the start, showed you the results. If you got a greenhouse, poured my heart out into the greenhouse time and time again, showing people how to grow their own food. If you don't have much space, majority of the hydroponic stuff, I went through it. The Dutch buckets, the rails, the floating raft, trying to help people grow their own food, become more self-sufficient. I don't know how much more concern I could possibly to show. If you feel like that what I'm doing, you get the impression that I'm not concerned about other people, I'll say this real quick. Please don't even take the time to watch any more videos that I do. Please don't leave any comments. There's a little box up at the top of this video. Right now it's probably green. It says uh, subscribe in it. Uh, click that box, unsubscribe, go on about your business, and the only thing I ask of you is do not let the doorknob hit you on the way out. I have poured my heart out to the whole world trying to show them how to be more self-sufficient, how to do exactly what I was doing, everything from start to finish, and I'm doing all I can to make a difference. I've talked to people who are addressing the GM concerns. They are staying away from the food in the store. They are growing more of their own food. They're being self-conscious, looking at those labels, and if it has anything to do with a corn product, soybeans, canola, cotton seeds, sugar beets, whatever, they will leave it in the store and they will find an alternative. They are making a difference. If all you do is go around and post links and leave comments 
uh, telling everybody all about these problems and you go back and sit in the corner somewhere with your thumb up your butt, you have done nothing except contribute to the problem. As I said, this will be the last time I ever address this issue in a video. It is too controversial. People get too worked up over it. Uh, and those people that generally get really worked up are the people who are doing absolutely nothing about it. I don't have any more time to spend on this. Uh, were it not with the situation with the seeds and trying to help these other people understand that that is not their concern right now. If you are truly concerned about the GM stuff, you need to change your diet. You need to change your focus in the grocery store. You need to be finding alternatives. You need to grow your own food. Just like the food in the store, nobody makes you buy that stuff. If you are truly concerned about it, you will take it upon yourself to make the necessary changes. And when you make those changes, you will also start teaching other people what you did and how you were able to get out of that part of the system. That's how you break the cycle. That's how you kill the genetically modified deal. You do not do it by sitting on your butt letting everybody else know what, their, what your concerns are and then waiting for somebody else to give you an answer. You gotta take responsibility for yourself. For all of the people who have been following along the last couple of years and seeing what I do and being able to learn from it and be a part of this, this process, I've always said this, I appreciate the support very much. I'm gonna continue doing what I do. And for the people who, whatever reason, they do not feel like uh, it's any more worth their time, uh, have a nice day. I mean, I can't be any more simpler than that. I cannot do any more than what I'm already doing. Uh, this 16 pages right here, it takes me a long time to put this together. This was last night's show and I got through every single bit of it. These were the links that I printed off so I could have that information. I do not get paid one single dime for this radio show. It is something that I accepted uh, as a way that I could be part of a solution. I encourage everybody else to sit back, think about what you're doing and just ask yourself, are you contributing to the problem? Are you actually concerned enough to get out there and make a difference, get off your butt and do something? Anything toward a step in the right direction is better than nothing at all. Again, folks, I appreciate the support. I'm doing the best I can with what I have to work with and I hope everybody else will do the same thing. So y'all take care. And Lord willing, I'll see you next time.